Ladies and gentlemen, this is the YouTube channel vlog show of inspiration and realness. Also, this is the YouTube channel vlog show of positivity, personality, and fun. This is Eric Lima Shenanigans of 1977. And now the perpetrator of these shenanigans, Big Beefy E himself from his Big Beefy Man Cave in New Bedford, Massachusetts. Mr. Shenanigans himself and the two-time Chilling 3000 2022 End of the Year Awards winner, Eric M. Lima. Thank you very much, everybody. And uh, thank you very much, everybody. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Announcer, for that what lovely intro. Man, I'm screwing up today. Well, <laughs> yeah, so it's like screw ups, foul ups, bloops, bleeps, and blunders. I think after I think whatever what happened this week has been affecting my brain a little bit. Um, ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank uh, thank everybody for tuning in. I want to thank our announcer for that lovely intro. Welcome to yet another episode of Eric Lee Shenanigans of 1977. And this is episode 354. That's right, 300. Episode 354 of the show. What's going on, everybody? Wow, <laughs> you see me a lot. Uh, very, very, uh, very, very happy to be here. And once again, going to give you the AEW Dynamite Report. Now, as you know, Revolution is coming up March the 5th. That is one day before my birthday. Would you believe that? So, it's going to be a lot of fun. And I'm kind of, I'm personally looking forward to it. It's going to be a really, really cool, really cool time. And I got right here what happened on Dynamite as uh, as it gets, you know, things get more interesting. Uh, but they, I wanted to give a shout out to Alex Paris for inviting me on Bunzi's Jungle Challenge today. Um, if you want to know what happened with the episodes between myself, Jody Scow, and Brandon Martin, the Battle of Rant and Rave, um, we're, you're going to have to tune in in July. I hate to say it. Uh, I'm not going to spoil what I did, but I but I had a great time today. It was a, it was a, um, a great time was had by all today, and I, I had to say I had a wonderful time. It was an honor to be part of Alex Paris' channel for the very first time. I think that was the first time I've ever been on a game show with Alex Paris. But you have to wait till July to see my appearance because he meant something about July. So you're gonna have to wait till then to watch it. But right now, but I had a great time. I want to give a shout out to to Alex Paris, check out his channel, The 25, and uh, KAPR, and uh, you know, check out what he does there, the bon the Bonzi Challenge, man. That's too it, I was to say, I was really entertained and had a great time, and I mean, I made a joke of Bedtime for Bonzi. I think there was a, a, a movie called Bedtime for Bonzo, and that's why I called it that, and so, but... <laughs> Let's just say that <laughs> Bonzi's honorary because he he has uh, he has no teeth he, he, uh, and no toothbrush. Something was wrong with Bonzi's oblongata. Let me I'll just I'll just give a little hint about what happened to me. Just <laughs> like this, I had a great time. Anyways, I I had a great time. You get to watch the whole episode in July, I believe. So I'm really really happy about that. Um. Let's go. Let's talk about AEW Dynamite, shall we? A world title eliminator matchup. This was going on while I was playing Bonzi's uh, Jungle Challenge. MJF goes one on one to Kanosuke Takeshita uh, in a world title eliminator matchup, or as MJF likes to call him, take a shit. <laughs> I don't know why. That's mean. Uh, MJF obviously won the matchup, and then he attacked the referee and Takeshita after the matchup with his di Dynamite Diamond Ring. It's like he it just won it on purpose. Just. Just to keep using that ring. If you try to do that, say brass knucks to the face, pal. With that ridiculous Rocky Maivia wannabe haircut. MJF, Maxwell Jacob Freeman. I mean, next time, if I was if I was wrestling him, I don't care if I get disqualified. I would wang him. I would wing him in the wang wang. You know what I mean? And just like, boom! And go, uh, you're not going to have any kids for a while. You know? I don't like MJF. I can't stand the guy. You know what? He'll probably make fun of me and make fun of me how fat I am and all that. And he'll flip me off. I go, I'll just go. I'm like, yeah, I'm getting dissed by a guy with frizzy hair, man. You know, oh, his hair's all frizzied up. He thinks he's Rocky Maivia back in 1996. You know, he looks like, he looks like a member of Menudo on crack. <laughs> yeah, MJF so ugly. His mom, and when he was a baby, his mama had to feed him with a slingshot, you know. MJF. I'm better than you. You know it. <laughs> yeah, I know he's got a nice. He's got a nice singing voice. He'd be singing instead of wrestling, but he wants to be a jerk and all that. And 
uh, you know, you know, God bless the woman that would that marry him. That would marry him. You know what I mean? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> um, Naomi Rosenblum. I think her name was. Her name is Naomi, sweetheart. God bless you. Hope you can put up with him. Uh, and I don't know how his cat put up with him either. That's MJF for you. I can't stand him, but you know, it's, it's fun making fun of him because he's a heel. Because he, he he knows how to play the old school heel perfectly. I just I just I just you know. Yo, keep you know, if you want you want to be entertained, have him dish you and you diss him right back. There you go. Make you smile, make you laugh. And he, and it helps you learn how to talk trash too. So anyway, so MJF won the matchup, attacking the referee and to, to catch the after the matchup, Brian Danson came out to chase him out of the ring. Samoa Joe, who once again is the TNT champion for the second time, cut a promo on Wardlow. And then they had a women's title eliminator matchup, Jamie Hayter and the bunny went at it. Um Britt Baker even had a sign, uh, sign the fan made, and Pinnell before he grabbed the sign and tore it up. I was like, you know, oh, you're gonna tear up the sign here, make your husband eat it. And that's what I would do. He needs. To. And then we're after Jamie Hader won the matchup, and then Renee Kapakat interviewed Tony Storm and Soraya. They decided to send a message to Britt Baker and Jamie Hader by attacking Leva Bates. Lexi Nair interviewed MJF, and MJF's been running his mouth about Daniel Bryan as usual and trying to make things personal. That's MJF Warrior. He's a freaking jerk. I call my, you know, he is my jerk off friend, and I'm more like mighty jackass freak. That's 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 MJF, um, or moronic jackass freak. There you go. Anyways, on the the Garcia Guevara gauntlet happened. Ricky Starks went up against Angelo Parker first, beat him. He um, went up against Matt Menard, beat him, but then Daniel Garcia. And then what happened was, I believe Chris Jericho disguised himself in a mask, punched Starks in the face with that Jewish effect, giving Garcia the win, or was he disqualified? I forget, I wasn't paying attention. I believe Garcia did win the matchup when the referee wasn't looking. I think Sammy Guevara distracted him. Then um, Rene Paquette interviewed the acclaimed and Billy Gunn. Billy Gunn said, once again says he's staying out of his matchup, even though I have feelings for my sons. He claimed and agreed to, to this. Then, uh, while Brene Paquette was interviewed, Brian da Danielson Takesha in the trainer's room, looks like he was locked in, and it seems like Jose, the assistant, and Preston Vance were behind the whole thing. It was like, MJF. And I'm like, dude, if you want to take out the guy yourself, you want to pay money to take out the guy, he has to be in the ring for you to do your job, for you to do it, instead of locking him up, because if you lock him up, you're keeping him safe from injury. I mean, how dumb uh, uh, is Las Facts... Faction in Ungonable is. I mean, how stupid. It's like the, like the Three Stooges. Roosh is Mo, and you got um, Jose is Larry, and Preston Vance is Curly. Dude, I mean, seriously. Despite that, you know, Takesha fought Vance and Jose, the assistant, off. Brian Danson charged to the ring while Roosh was entering the ring. You know, MJF came, comes out and runs his mouth. And then. And and then Brian Danielson came to the ring. And the American Dragon did win the match. That's right, he did win the matchup. And then MJF was was on commentary during that time, <clears throat> attacking Danielson after the matchup. I mean, MJF is scared. He's scared of Brian Danielson. He said Brian Danielson doesn't have what it takes to be a champion, dude. Watch his matches in the WWE. Stupid. I'll tell you one thing. If he has what it takes to be a champion in WWE, he has what it takes to be a champion in AEW, you dork. Oh, my God. You and that frizzy Mark Rucky might be a wannabe haircut. Get out of here with that. What that crap. Burberry scarf design belt, please. MJF, I'm better than you. You know it. Yeah, you know what? <laughs> right? That's what, that's what I think of you. <laughs> you know? You know, you can make fun of me all you want. I've heard every name under the sun, son. Under the sun, son. You know what I mean? You know, I'm older than you, punk, so you, you respect your elders, son. I'll call you son because I'm older than you, punk. What a goomball. MJF is a space alien. Look at his hair. Oh, my goodness. And you know how M how ugly MJF is? Well, MJF is so ugly is, is when he was when he was a baby, everybody had to feed him with a slingshot, you know? Oh. Anyways, MJ, oh, MJF is so stupid, mind readers charge him half price. I mean... I'm better than you. You know it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know MJF is so ugly. She, uh, he makes Rose, he makes Rosie O'Donnell look like a Playboy centerfold. I mean, come on now, seriously. 
Oh, man. <laughs> Anyways. Um, Tony Schiavone interviewed two members of the Impractical Jokers, Q and Merv, who got Floyd Chris Jericho's baseball bat, and they called him out, saying, you better respond. We're pulling a practical joke on you. So, as a prank. The trio's title was on the line. This is championship fight night, for those of you who don't know. Uh, the Elite defending the, uh, the trio's title against A.L. Fox in top flight and a lot, and this match was considered match night in my book because these two guys went at it near falls, but in the end, the Elite. Carry home my wayward son retains the titles. Lexington interviews Stokely Hathaway, and Stokely Hathaway's cr um, crying and whining about Hook. Hook just came in, grabs him by the arm, and Lexington says, like, stop, you're going to hurt him, and then he looks looks at him, and for the first time, Hook talks. He said, Hook said something. He said, better watch your words, sir. Call him, sir. Good manners. And then Stokely Hathaway's like, medic! What a baby. Stokely Hathaway. That dude looks like if somebody threw D Charles Barkley in the dryer and shrunk him. Now, here you go. Stokely Hathaway. He's he's the love child of Kevin Hart and Charles Barkley. Let me, you know, is he the height of Kevin Hart and he and he's bald headed like Charles Barkley. You know what I mean Stokely Hathaway? Come on, give me a break. He used to be known as Malcolm Bivens. Used to be known as Indu Share. He should have stuck in the WWE Suns and hung out with Indu Share. You know they could protect you. Instead, you get it. You got a bunch of buffoons in, in in the firm that don't get along. You get eat uh, eat uh, all ego eat and page. He lives up to his name. He's bossing around a veteran who's disrespecting, who he's disrespecting Matt Hardy. Cool, not cool. Isaiah Kennedy who looks up to Matt Hardy. He's crying about the whole thing. I mean seriously. I mean if I if I would eat and page, I'd kick him in. I'd kick him through the uprights, man. I'm telling you, it's ridiculous. Ethan Page, you're ridiculous the way you treated Matt Hardy. No wonder why you're losing matches. Because it's all about you, Kumball. Anyways, the main event of the night was the tag team titles on the AEW or online. The acclaimed defending them against the Guns. And then they, and while the referees knocked out, the Guns tried to cheat to, um, try to cheat to win the belts, but Billy Gunn stops them, and then he got whacked in the face with a belt, and they and they attacked and they attacked them, and it got to the point where, you know, Anthony Bowens and, and Colton Guns got near falls until Austin Grun grabbed one of the belts, hits Anthony Bowens, giving Colton Gunn the pinfall victory, and they ended up becoming new tag team champions. But it seems like to me it'll be very interesting to see how they're going to the claim is going to respond about losing the belts to the Guns. And now the gun cl the Guns are the new tag team champions. And you know what? I would be laughing if Billy said, "Hey, you dress like cowboys, be the smoking guns." Anyway, like chicks dig you. Oh, my Lord. Uh, I don't know. Well, that is all the time we have on this show. Episode 354 of Eric Lehman's Shenanigans of 1977. Um, earlier on, I did I forgot, I did, I did an episode about the Nintendo Direct. I uh, forgot to upload it because of everything going on. So it's uploaded now. Check that out. I did this video about three hours ago. Before doing Bonzi's uh, Jungle Challenge with Mr. Alex Paris. Check that Check uh, check his channel out though if you can. Um, wait till uh, July for my episode along with the Rant and Ravers, um, Brandon Martin, Jordy Scow. It'll be on. It'll be in July, so I'm kind of excited about how it turned out. So it doesn't bother me. I have to wait a while till July. It's five months down the road. Doesn't matter. Doesn't make a bit of a difference. But I'm not going to tell you what happened though. You can have to tune in and be patient and tune in. So up uh, so until so. I had a lot of fun today. I had a great time. Now we are getting down to to brass tacks here. It's time for me to get some sleep after I upload this video. And that'll be it for that. Tomorrow, banks on tomorrow and Thursday. We'll see what happens. All right. I'll see you around. And until the next episode comes comes around, I beat you good night, though. At least Mr. Mouncer, take us home. That is all for today's episode of the show. This is Mr. Lima speaking for Eric Lima Shenanigans of 1977. A big beefy E, do it for Bob Saget production. In association with a sweet bowl for raving dingleberries, telepictures, and distribution. Thank you for watching another great episode of Eric Lima Shenanigans of 1977. Until the next episode, goodbye for now.